For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used 75% of Lion Brand's Pound of Love in pastel pink. As for tools, a 4 and a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Watch to the end of the video to learn how to enter this week's giveaway. We're using four stitches for this project and they will be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting started on this hoodie, we're going to grab our category 4 yarn, make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 6mm hook and start off by making a chain that goes from our underarm down to where we want the bottom of this top to be, keeping in mind that we will have a bottom border as well. So I'm going to start off by making a chain that comes out to 6 inches or 15 centimeters, or that's a total of 23 chains. Now that we have our chain, what we're going to do from here is go in with our first row of slip stitches. So we're going to start off by blocking off that last chain and do a chain up of one. From here, we're going to insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook with a slip stitch. So we're going to insert our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through everything that's on our hook. We're going to do the next one together just one more time. So insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over and pull through everything. And once when you have that, go ahead and put one slip stitch into every chain that we have and I'll meet you guys back at the end of this row. So we have just made our way all the way down with our first row of slip stitches and now that we get here, we're going to start to build up one side with increases so that this can build up towards our body portion. So what we're going to do is start off by doing a chain up of two that counts as our increase. From here, we're going to flip our work. We're going to be skipping this first chain that we have that's closest to our hook. And then we're going to do a back loop slip stitch into that second chain. So skipping this first one, like I said, insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over and pull through, making sure that we insert it in through that back loop. Let's do one more together. Making sure we're going into that back loop, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over and pull through everything. Once we have that, go ahead and put one back loop slip stitch into every loop that we have going all the way down. And once we reach the bottom, this is going to be our blunt end. So we're just going to do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then work our way back down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every chain. And then I'll meet you guys back once we get to the end over here so that we can do our increases together just one more time. So we have just made our way back down with our third row. We are now at our increase side, so we're just going to do our increases together just one more time. So just like before, what we're going to do is do a chain out of two. From here, we will be flipping our work. And then we're going to insert our hook into the second back loop from our hook, which is the second chain right here. So we're going to skip this first guy over here. Go ahead and insert your hook into that back loop. Yarn over, if I can, and pull all the way through. Let's do the next back loop slip stitch together, just into that next back loop. We're going to yarn over and pull through everything. And just like before, go ahead and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch that we have going all the way down. Once we make our way down to the end, we're going to do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then bring it on back with more back loop slip stitches while maintaining the increase that we have along this side. And we're going to keep going just like that until we have a portion that reaches from our mid underarm right here over to the front of our body. And then I'll meet you guys back once we have all that finished up to let you guys know how many rows and the measurements that I have and then also what we're going to do from there. But right before we let you guys go, just make sure that once when we meet each other back, you guys end along this top row right here because we're going to have to make a chain that works straight into the body portion. And also keeping in mind that once we do put the stitch up to ourselves just to make sure that it fits, we are stretching it as much as it can because this stitch has a lot of give to it. So we are back and we have just finished up going in with our little underarm portion right here. And I ended up having a total of 11 rows or this comes out to about an inch and a half or 4 centimeters but that is all unstretched. But from here, we should have all ended up at this corner, and all we're going to do is put this up to ourselves and then make a measurement from this corner going all the way up to our shoulder tip. So I already measured mine out, and I'm going to start off by making a total of 4 inches or 10 centimeters, or that comes out to 15 chains. So now that I have my chain, I'm now going to go in with more back loop slip stitches, but just going across the entirety of my chest. So how we're going to start this off is by blocking off this last chain, 
do a chain up of one and then into that chain that we blocked off we're going to go in with slip stitches just putting one into every chain once we make it over to our underarm portion right over here we're going to continue going in with back loop slip stitches going all the way down but i'll meet you guys back once we get right here just to remind you guys so we are back and we have just made our way down our chain over to this underarm portion and all we're going to do is just go back to doing back loop slip stitches you guys already know how to do this so go ahead and keep doing this going all the way down once we reach the end we're going to do a chain up of one flip our work and then bring it back down with more back loop slip stitches and we aren't going to be doing any increases or decreases into any of the ends we're just going to keep going until we have a solid block that goes across our chest from one base of our neck to the other side of the base of our neck and then i'll meet you guys back so that we can get started with our underarm portion for the other side but make sure that once we meet each other back that we are actually ended on the bottom so that we don't have to do any cutting and tying to make sure that we have the same size for our underarm portion over there so i'll meet you guys back in just a handful of rows and making sure that when we're going in with this section, just like how we went in with the underarm section, when we're putting this up to ourselves, we are stretching it just as if we were actually wearing it. So go ahead and keep that in mind, and I'll meet you guys back once when we are done with all of that. Alrighty, so we have just made our way all the way across our body portion with our back loop slip stitches that just went from one side of the base of our neck over to the other side. And I had a total from this first row that we did all the way down to where I ended, a total of 54 rows or a total of eight inches or 20 centimeters, and that is unstretched. And once when we have this, we should have all ended on the bottom side. And now we can get started with this underarm portion that we have right here, but on the other side. So the first thing we're gonna do is insert our stitch marker into the spot where we did our chain up for our body portion. So if we go back a couple clips, I ended up saying that I made a chain up of 15 right here. So the easiest way to figure that out is to count from this top portion down this same amount of chains that we made and then insert our stitch marker into that loop and then we're going to work all the way up with back loop slip stitches all the way up until our stitch marker and then into the row after that we're going to be doing our decreases so go ahead and do a chain up of one flip our work put one back loop slip into every stitch until we hit our stitch marker and then i'll meet you guys back so that we can decrease together and now that we've made our way down with our back loop slip stitch row until we hit our stitch marker we are now going to do a decrease of two back loop slip stitches working our way back down so all we're going to do is do a chain up of one and flip our work and now that we're working our way down towards the bottom of our top we're going to go in with our decrease so into this first back loop we're going to insert our hook yarn over pull through and into our next back loop go ahead and insert and from here we should have three loops on our hook we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops and from here go ahead and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch that we have going all the way down once we make our way down to the end of the top, we're going to do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then bring it back up, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch that we have. And then once we get to that end, we're going to do a chain up of one, flip our work. And then when we're working our way down towards the bottom of the top, that's when we're going to be going in with our decrease of two back loop slip stitches. So we're only going to be decreasing into every other row, and we're just going to keep repeating that until we have the same amount of rows that we have along this other underarm portion over here. And then once we have that, we're going to do a chain up of one, and then we're going to cut, and then do this entire sequence just one more time. Alright, so we have just finished up going in with both of our panels, and what we're going to do next is just seam up our underarm portion right here to close off the sides, and then we'll do our shoulder strap together. So this part is fairly simple. We've done this a million times on the channel, so let's just get this started. We're going to be inserting our hook into the bottom corner into the front panel, then also into the bottom corner loop into the back panel at the same time. Next, we're going to insert our hook onto our work and then pull through. From here, we're gonna do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, we're just gonna go all the way down, putting one single crochet, making sure we're going in through the front panel and the back panel at the same time. So let's do the first few together. Into this first available loop into the front panel, we're gonna insert our hook into the next available loop we have into the back panel insert your hook and then we're going to single crochet let's do the next one together into the next available loop into the front panel next available loop into the back panel then single crochet and we're actually just going to keep doing this going all the way down until we don't have any more loops left once we hit that point we're going to do a chain up of one and cut and then we're going to do the same thing that we did here on the other side so we are back and we have just finished up seaming up both of our sides and now we are ready to get started on this neck portion. So what we're gonna wanna do is actually try this on 
And then we're going to measure from this corner of our front panel up and over our shoulder to this corner of our back panel. And I have already measured mine out, so I'm just going to start off by making a chain of 7, or that comes out to 2 inches or 5 centimeters. And then we're going to slip stitch it into this back corner. And then we're just going to single crochet across, make a chain of the same number count, attach it to this corner, and then single crochet across again. So let's just get that started together. So like I said, we are going to start off by inserting our hook into this corner loop, insert our yarn, and pull through. From here, we're going to start off by making a chain of our measurement, and like I said before, mine is 2 inches or 5 centimeters or 7 chains. And now that we have our chain, what we're going to do from here is slip stitch it into this corner loop, into the back panel, so yarn over, and pull through everything. And then from here, we're going to work across our back panel, putting one single crochet into every other side slip stitch row. So let's just do the first bit together. My first side slip stitch row is going to be the one that is concaved in just like this. So we're just going to have to find a loop that is on top. There's not going to be any pretty loops for us to go into. And then we're going to single crochet. We're going to be skipping this next raised one. And then we're going to single crochet into this next one that is flipped in. And we're just going to keep doing that going all the way down. Once we hit this next corner, I will meet you guys back just to remind you guys that we're going to be making a chain again. And then I'll let you guys do the rest from there. So we are now at this corner, and now we're going to make another chain that is the same chain length that we made on this side. So I'm going to make another chain of 7, or that comes out to 2 inches or 5 centimeters. And then once we have that, we are going to be slip stitching it into this front corner that we have on this front panel. So let's flip our work so that's a little bit easier for us. Go ahead and insert your hook into that corner loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. And then once we have that, we're just going to be going across with our single crochets, just like how we did over here. We're going to slip stitch it into where we first inserted our hook. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then we can get started on our bottom border. So we have just finished up going in with our chain that goes around for our neck portion, and now we're just going to go in with our bottom border. So the first thing we're going to do is switch out to our 4 millimeter hook, and then we're just going to go all along the bottom, putting one single crochet into every side slip stitch row that we have. So we're just going to insert our hook into any one of these loops, it doesn't matter which one. And we're going to insert our working yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one. Once we have that into our next side slip stitch row, which mine is this raised one right here, we're going to go in with a single crochet. Once we have that, we're going to go into our next one right here, which is this one that is sunken in. We're going to go in with a single crochet. And we're just going to keep doing this going all the way around for this first row. Once we make our way around to the end, we are going to slip stitch into that chain up of one space that we made. And then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do our next row together. So we've just made our way all the way around with our first row of single crochet for our bottom border. And what we're going to do now is another row of single crochet, but this is just going to be a row of back loops. So we're going to do a chain up of one. And then into this first available back loop that we have, we're just going to insert our hook yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And by doing it this way, we're going to get a really pretty ribbing along the bottom. But go ahead and just keep doing this going all the way around, and I'll meet you guys back at the end of this row. So we've just finished up going in with our bottom border, and now we're going to go in with our sleeve. I got a little overzealous and did this one side, so we're going to do this side together. What we're going to do is switch back to our 6 millimeter hook, and we're going to start off by making sure that our work is flipped right side out. And then we're going to insert our hook into any one of these loops that is right next to the seam. And we're going to go all the way around, putting one single crochet into our armhole that we left for ourselves. So once when our yarn is on our hook, we're going to pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And for this underarm portion right here, we're all going to be going in through every side slip stitch row with one single crochet into each. Once we get up here, these are regular loops, so we're going to be putting one single crochet into each of these, going across our chain down this portion right here, and then once we get to this other underarm portion, do the same thing, put one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. Once we make our way all the way around, we're going to slip stitch into this chain up of one space that we just made for ourselves, and then we're going to go in with the next row together. So we've just made our way all the way around with our first row of our single crochet, and now we're going to do another row of single crochets, but this is going to be in through the back loops, just like how we did the bottom border. So all this is going to be is do a chain up of one, and then we're just going to go in with one back loop single crochet, going all the way around. 
Once we make our way around, we're going to meet each other back so that we can get started on our cap sleeve portion together. And now that we are back with our second row of single crochets, which this was a row of back loop single crochets by the way, now we can start going in with our cap sleeve. So this part is going to be completely up to you guys. You guys can go ahead and eyeball this. I will give you guys my number as well. But what we're going to do is start off by going in with back loop single crochets until we get about mid body portion about here. We're going to do a couple back loop half double crochets and then do back loop double crochets going all the way up and around and then repeating the same sequence going down. And we're doing that so that this top shoulder portion can be wider than the bottom. And then we are also going to start doing some decreases along the bottom so that we don't have too much fabric at the bottom so that it doesn't end up buckling. But for this first row, we're just going to go in with our singles to half doubles to doubles. So what I'm going to be doing is going in with 15 back loop single crochets. And now that we have our single crochets, next we're going to go in with our back loop half double crochets and I will be going in with just four of those. And now that we have this portion all finished up, our back loop single step back loop half doubles, what we're going to do is count the amount of stitches that we have and then just place a stitch marker on the other side just so we know where to stop with our back loop double crochets. And then once when we hit this stitch marker, then we're going to switch out for the same amount of back loop half doubles and the same amount of back loop singles. So from here, I'm just going to go in with a bunch of back loop double crochets until we hit our stitch marker. And then once we do that, we're going to go in with the same amount of back loop half doubles and back loop singles, and then I'll meet you guys back at the end of this row. And now that we've made our way around with our third row, our fourth row and beyond for this cap portion is going to be decreases into the first two loops. So a decrease of two back loop single crochets into the first two and into the last two. So what we're going to do from here is start off with a chain up of one, and then we're going to be doing a decrease into these two loops. So we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, into that next loop, yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook. From here, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. And then from here, we're going to keep going up with the same amount of single crochets that we've had so far. So we're not going to count this one loop as one. We're going to count the two loops that we went into as those two loops. So we should have in total, counting these two, 15 stitches occupied with our single crochets, four half doubles, and then 20 double crochets, which is the same numbers that we should have had. Once we make our way all the way around, we're going to do a decrease of two back loop single crochets into those last two loops. So I'll meet you guys back all the way around. So we've just made our way all the way around and we have left our last two loops so that we can do a decrease of two back loop single crochets together. So what we're going to do is go into that second to last back loop, yarn over, pull through, back loop right after that, yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook. From here, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. And from here, we are just going to insert our hook into that chain up of one space that we made for ourselves at the beginning of this row. Once when we have that, we're going to do a chain up of one and repeat the same thing that we just did. So start off by doing a decrease of two back loop single crochets. And then we're going to go all the way up, putting one single crochet into every stitch until we're ready to do our half double crochets. So from here on out, we're going to have one less back loop single crochet, but our half doubles and our double crochets are going to be exactly the same. So just start off with our decrease of two back loop singles, go all the way around with our stitches, and then close off with another decrease of two back loop singles. And then keep doing that until we get a cuff length where the top portion reaches over the top of our shoulder and then we can go ahead and just make a sleeve that goes straight down from there. So I'll meet you guys back once when I have my other side all finished up to let you guys know how many rows I went in with. So we are back and we have just finished up going in with our cap portion. And just to let you guys know I ended up having a total of 14 rows and then from here we're actually going to want to try this on and then we can go in with the length that we want our sleeve to be. And I have already measured mine out. I want mine to be a total of 18 and a half inches or 47 centimeters. So I'm going to start off by making a chain of 65 and that comes out to 18 and a half inches or 47 centimeters, but also keeping in mind that we will have a cuff that has a cutout for our thumb as well. So now that we have our chain, what we're going to do from here is go into the row of slip stitches. So just like before, we're going to block off that last chain, do a chain up of one and then into that loop that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to go in with our slip stitches. 
And from here, this part's gonna be easy peasy. Just go all the way down, putting one slip stitch into every chain. And I'll meet you guys back once we get to the cap sleeve so that we can work on that together. Now that we've made our way all the way down with our first row of our slip stitches, now we're going to attach it into the base. So all we're gonna do is slip stitch it into that next available loop that we have into our cap. So we're gonna slip stitch into that loop and now this first row is all closed off. And in order to work our way up to the next row, we're going to slip stitch into that next loop, flip our work and then go down with back loop slip stitches just like how we went in for the body. So just going into that next back loop, we're going to insert, yarn over and pull through everything. And we're just gonna keep doing this going all the way down. Once we hit the end of this row, we're gonna do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then bring our back loop slip stitches back down towards the base of our cap. And then we're gonna slip stitch it into the base just like how we did. And we're gonna keep doing that going all the way around until we don't have any more loops left. Then I'll meet you guys back so that we can seam it all up together. So we are back and we have just finished going in with our rows of back loop slip stitches going all the way around until we didn't have any more loops left into the base. And what we're going to do now is just seam it up the same way that we have seamed up our side portion. So the first thing we're going to want to do is just make sure that it's flipped wrong side out so that our seams are all matching. Now that our seams are all flipped and on the same side, what we're going to do next is go in with a single crochet going in through the front and the back panel at the same time, going all the way down until we don't have any more loops left. So let's get that started together. So just to do the first one together, we did insert our hook into the two corner loops that we had and we're gonna pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And just to do the next one, we're gonna insert our hook into that next available loop we have into the front panel. Then also into that next available loop we have into the back panel. Once we have that, we're going to single crochet. And go ahead and keep doing this going all the way down until we don't have any more loops left. Once we have this side all done, go ahead and do the same thing that we just did here on the other side. And then once we have both of our sleeves done, then we can work on the cuffs at the same time. So we have just finished up going in with both of our sleeves. And the next thing we're going to do is go in with our cuff. So the first thing we're going to want to do in order to prep for that is flip everything right side out, making sure that all of our seams are on the inside. And then we're also going to be grabbing our four millimeter hook again. And then once we have all that ready, we are now gonna insert our hook into any one of these loops on the end of our sleeve. Once we have that, just like how we did the bottom border, we're gonna do a chain up of one, and then put one single crochet, and then put one single crochet into every side slip stitch row that we have. So let's just do the first few together. My first side slip stitch row is this one right here. So I'm gonna insert my hook into there and single crochet. My next one is this one that's underneath, single crochet into there. And then keep doing this going all the way around. I'll meet you guys back after we have slip stitched into that chain up one space that we just did. So now that we've made our way all the way around with our first row of single crochets, our next row, just like the bottom border, is gonna be another row of back loop single crochets. We're gonna keep going like this until we hit right where we want our thumb slit to be. And then we're actually gonna do the same thing on the other side and then we can start working on the thumb holes at the same time. So we have slip stitched into this chain up of one space. So we're gonna start off our next row by doing a chain up of one and then go into that first back loop with a single crochet. And we're just gonna keep doing this going all the way around, slip stitch into that first chain up of one space, chain up of one, and then keep going back and forth just like that until we get the length that we need. Now this is gonna be different for everyone. I will let you guys know the amount of rows that I have in the next clip. Once we have the length that we want for this one all the way up until we're ready to make our slit, go ahead and do a chain up of one and cut and then do the same thing that we did here on the other side and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do our slits on both of our cuffs at the same time. So we're back and we have just finished up going in with all of our back loop single crochets on both of our sleeves. And just to let you guys know, I ended up having a total of 10 rows for both and then I have also tried this on and I have inserted my stitch markers right where I want my thumb holes to be. So how this is going to work is once when we try this on, the side that our thumb holes are going to be on, that is going to be the front of our top now. So we're going to try this on and then we're going to insert stitch markers on either side of our thumb on both ends. And then once we have those all pinned off, then we can go in with the slit and then do just a couple more rows of back loop single crochets just to close this off. So just to let you guys know, I made sure that my seam that I had into my cuff 
was right in the middle of my palm. And then from there, I inserted my first stitch marker into the eighth loop from there. And then from that stitch marker, I inserted my next one into the sixth. And then I did the same thing on the other side. Once we have that, then we can go in with single crochets. Once we hit our stitch marker, do a chain of however many loops we have in between our stitch markers, and then go back around with back loop single crochets. And just keep going with more back loop single crochet rows until we get the length of the cuff that we want. So just to get this first cuff started off with each other, now that we have everything blocked off, we're going to be inserting our hook back into where our seam is, but you guys can insert it into wherever. I just like it to all be in one spot. So all I'm going to do is pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and then I'm just going to go all the way down, putting one back loop single crochet into every stitch until I hit my first stitch marker. And now that we've hit our first stitch marker, what we're going to do is count the amount of loops from one stitch marker to the next. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to start off by making a chain of seven. Once when I have my chain, I will be inserting my hook into the back loop that is right behind this stitch marker with a back loop single crochet. And from there, just go all the way back around, putting one back loop single crochet into every stitch. And the rest of this is going to be like normal. So slip stitch into this chain up of one space, do another chain up of one, and then go back down, putting one back loop single crochet into every stitch, including over this chain as well. And we're just going to keep going in rounds like that until we get the cuff length that we want. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'll meet you guys back once we have both of them done to let you guys know how many rows and also the measurement that I have. So we are back and we have just finished up going in with our thumb holes for each of our cuffs. And just to let you guys know, I came out with a total of 15 rows for both, or that came out to about three and a half inches or nine centimeters. Well, once we have these all finished up, we can actually get started on our hood. So go ahead and grab your six millimeter hook and let's get started. So going in with the first row when it comes to our hood, it's going to be pretty self-explanatory. We're just going to go across putting one single crochet into every stitch that we already have. So all I like to do is insert my hook into any one of these corner loops. It doesn't matter which one. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and we're just going to go all the way around putting one single crochet into every stitch, and then I'll meet you guys back once when we have slip stitched into this chain up of one space that we just did. So we are back and we have just finished up going in with our row of single crochet all the way around our neck hole that we have. And as you guys can see, we have inserted just a few stitch markers. So what these stitch markers represent is going to be where our hood is. This middle one is actually right in the middle of this body portion that we have. And then the two stitch markers that we have on either side is where our hood is going to overlap each other. And just to let you guys know from where my middle stitch marker is, I actually just counted out three loops on either side and then inserted my stitch marker into there, but you guys can make this as wide or as little as you guys want. But the only thing that I have to tell you guys just ahead of time is make sure that we're going in through the front because our thumb holes need to be along the same side. But other than that, we can actually get started on the hood right now. So to get started on our hood, we're first going to get started on the left side. So we're going to be inserting our hook into the right stitch marker. So what we're going to do is take out that stitch marker. And then we're going to insert our hook into that front loop right here. We're only going to be going in through the front loop because we're actually going to make this overlap. So once we make our way back around the other side, our double crochets is going to have to have a loop to go into. That's where all of these back loops are going to come into play. So now that our hook is in through that front loop, we're going to pull through. And then we're going to do a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet. And then from where we're at over to this next stitch marker, going over our middle stitch marker, we're going to be going in with front loop double crochets while maintaining an increase into every seventh stitch. And this doesn't necessarily need to be within our stitch markers that we have. I will just be meeting you guys back once we have our six double crochets and then we can increase into the seventh together. So we are back and I have just gone in with my six front loop double crochets. And I'm ready to go in with my increase of two into the seventh. And I just so happen to be right where the stitch marker is. But just to keep in mind, once when we hit our stitch marker, we no longer need to be doing our front loop double crochets. So I'm just going to be going in through the regular loops. But if yours is a little different, go ahead and adjust to whatever you guys have. But now that we are here, what we're going to do is go in with an increase of two. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through with one double crochet, and then into that same stitch. 
I'm going to go in with another double crochet if I can. There we go. And then we're just going to be maintaining this going all the way around, remembering that we do not need to go into the front loops anymore. And we're just going to keep going until we hit the other side where our first chain up of three starts and then we can go into the back loops with our overlap for the hood. So we're back and we have just made our way all the way around with this first layer-ish of our hood. And what we're going to do now is go into those back loops that we left for ourselves when we first started off this chunk. So we're into the loop that's right next to this chain up of three. And then from here we're just going to fold this down and then work into these back loops that we have left for ourselves. And also once when we get here we are going to continue maintaining the pattern that we have been doing which is an increase into every seventh. So it doesn't matter how many double crochets we have, we're just going to continue to do that into these back loops. And then we're going to continue to do back loop double crochets until we don't have any more back loops left to go into. And then I'll meet you guys back at the end of this row so that we can get started on the next row together. Alright, so we are back and we have just finished up going in with our first row of our hood where we did our little under flap, I guess we can call it. And from here I'm actually just going to be doing one more row of increases. But for this portion, we're going to start off with doing a decrease first, just so that our hood can stay open around our face. So this is going to be the same increases that we just did in the previous row. So I'm going to be doing six double crochets and then increasing into the seventh after the decrease, of course. But you guys can go ahead and increase more or less and for more rows or for less rows, depending on what kind of hood style you guys want. So just to get this started off, we're going to do our chain up of three and then we're going to flip our work. And now that our work is flipped, what we're going to do from here is go in with a decrease of two into those first two stitches. So we're going to prepare for a double crochet into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, stitch right after that, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. Then from here, go ahead and maintain the same increases that we have been doing or until whatever increases that you guys want. And then I'll meet you guys back once we have just two loops left so that we can be doing our decrease into there as well. So we're back and we have just made our way all the way around with our second row when it comes to our hood and we have left those last two stitches so that we can go in with a decrease of two double crochets together just like how we started this off. So really quickly we're going to prepare for a double crochet, go into that second to last stitch, yarn over, pull through, go into that last stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. Once we have that, we're going to do a chain up of three, flip our work, and then I'm going to be maintaining the decreases that we have along the outer edges for probably the next two rows, so a total of four in total. Or if you guys actually have your flap a little bit further in, I would say keep going for as many loops as you guys have for your flap. But anyways, this is actually the width that I want for my hood, so I'm just going to maintain these loops while doing the decreases into the next few rows, into the front and the back, but other than that, I'm just going to keep going back and forth with double crochets until I get the height that I want. So I'll meet you guys back once when I have the total height of my hood, so I'll let you guys know how many rows and the measurement that I have as well. So we are back, and I have just finished up going in with the entirety of my hood, and just to let you guys know, I did come out with a total of 26 rows, or that also came out from the base all the way up to the top, you guys can't see it, but 13 inches or 33 centimeters. And then once when we have the height that we need, now we're just going to seam it all up. So what we're going to do when it comes to seaming up our hood, it's going to be fairly simple, the same way that we've seamed up everything else so far. So what we're going to do is grab the two corner ends that we have, and then we're going to pinch them together. But once when we have that, we're actually going to reach our hand underneath and then grab this inner corner that we have right here and then pull it through. And then with these corners that we just pinched, we are going to adjust it so that it is all laying down in one direction. And now our seam is going to be along the inside. And then once we flip it right side out, everything's gonna look nice and clean on top. And since we've already done our seam a handful of times together, we're just gonna do the first one together and then I'll let you guys go from there. So just going in with our seam, we are making sure that our hook has gone in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. And from here, we're just going to do a chain up of one, and then we're going to insert our hook into the first available loop into the front panel, next available loop into the back panel, and then single crochet this on closed. Go ahead and keep doing that going all the way down until we don't have any more loops left, and then I'll meet you guys back. So we are back, and we have just finished up seaming up the hood, and we are actually all done. So the last thing that we have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And 
and now that we've woven in the ends, this is our finished hoodie. This top was a lot of fun to do because it's a mixture of some older pieces and also some future ones. And we can never go wrong with a new twist on a classic, right? There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by doing us a favor and going out of your way to show someone you care about them. You can send them a text, make them dinner, or crochet them something. Whatever you guys want, just be sure to tell us about it. Good luck to everyone who enters. Also, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, because believe it or not, it really, really, really helps. And be sure to share us on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook, links down below. Link to our Etsy page is down there too if you want to buy this piece or any other piece on the channel. And be sure to favorite the shop so you don't miss out on new patterns and exclusive deals. Thanks so, so, so much for sticking around to the end of the video, and I'll see y'all in the next one.